All right, so everybody, welcome to uh, the Pod Box and the podcast Savannah Podcast Meetup. Uh, I'm Raz. I'm the owner of the Pod Box and Podcast on the Go, and co-host of the Creative Truth. Uh, Creative Truth is a podcast where me and Tyler, this guy over here, <laughs> where we uh, talk about creatives and uh, how to get people out of the uh, starving artist mentality. So that's that's kind of what we do, and that's so. This is a part of that. So you guys will be on YouTube. Uh, if you're in the audience, if you ask any questions and stuff. Uh, but, so I guess right now we have a great guest speaker, Mr. Henrik DeJour. Is that right? Uh, he is uh, brilliant. So I'm excited to hear what, what he has to say. He speaks all the time, so it'll be good. Uh, but first, before we do that, I want to give you everybody a chance to um, tell what their podcast is. So you can come up here to the hot, speed, the hot spot, switch places with Henrik real quick, and then uh, and you can tell about your podcast. Yes, sir. <laughs> Wanna go? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Amber. I'm Kendra. And we're the hosts of Why Blink Matters, where we explore why small topics have big impacts. And uh yeah, we're excited to be here and keep making our product better. So we're excited to learn. Yes. <laughs> Any other podcasts? Do you want to introduce yourself, Jeff? <laughs> no. You're welcome to. Hey, I'm Jeff and I'm here to learn. Right. <laughs> Woo. Is Raz talking to or not so much? Uh, Shannon, do you want to? Oh, sure. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Shannon. I work for Visit Savannah, and we are hoping to bring a podcast to you very soon from Savannah's Destination Marketing Organization. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Cool. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, just give me one second. Sure. Because I don't know where that input went. Okay. Hey, I lost that yeah. Close. Close what? Scroll, scroll down. Oh, okay. Okay, so whenever you're ready. Yep, go ahead. You good? Yep. Yep, all right. So I'm Henrik uh, Thanks for having me over. So today we're going to be talking about how to launch a podcast from an idea repeatedly. Uh, so I've launched uh, eight podcasts in the past few years. And a uh, quick survey, how many of you know about podcasting? What a podcast is? A little? Okay, great, super. Uh, everybody know what a podcast is? Yeah, okay, good, great. I'll skip that pretty quickly. Uh, and how many of you have launched a podcast? More than one? Yes, great, super, great, fantastic. Okay, so a little bit about me. I'm a consultant. I, my company is called Another Damn Consultancy. I'm also a writer. I've written seven books in three years. That's a few blogs. Uh, there's the list of podcasts that I'm still managing right now today, um, and I'll talk about them a little, little more li later on. Next slide, please. So what is a podcast? It's a, usually an episodic series of media files, digital, of course, uh, that can be set up so that new episodes are automatically downloaded via web syndication or streaming to the owner's local computer, or more importantly, the port portable media players are not so much anymore. Uh, those are the iPod days, which iPod is not so much anymore. So it's usually to your smartphone. It's the most popular way. And uh, the word iPod, uh, or podcast more importantly, was derived allegedly by the word portable on demand, not necessarily based on iPod, uh, which was branded, of course, by a well-known company. Uh, so there's actually four kinds of podcasts. There's audio podcasts, which we're very familiar with. There's enhanced podcasts, which is actually a different file format, which typically will show you uh, slides. So if you need to show a slide deck while talking about it, you, you can do enhanced podcasts, and it will go through each slide while you're talking about it. And then there's uh, podcast novels. Um, uh, I haven't heard of podcast novel. I listen to audio books, but that's a different format. Um, and then there's, of course, video podcasts. Um, some of you have seen those. They're usually very large files. And streaming, well, uh, video nowadays is, you can, of course, and 5G will make it easier, but um, they're usually large files and they suck up a lot of space on your, your smartphone. Uh, but moving on. So a little bit about podcast statistics. Uh, the latest stats that I found were 70% uh, 70 70 of people know about what a podcast is. 32% of them listen to podcasts on a monthly basis. That's up from 17% uh, in 2015. Uh, 22% listen weekly. Uh, and then age demographics, you can read those if you want. 
And then, uh, yeah, so Apple's had over a billion subscriptions to podcasts. Uh, they don't call it iTunes anymore. They call it Apple Podcasts. Um, but yeah, next slide. So interestingly, 56% are male and 44 are female. That's rapidly changing to more 50-50-ish. And uh, the demographics as far as income to the listeners, 45% of them make 75K or more. And 16% of household income is like 125, yeah, 150K. Uh, so they're usually fairly well educated. And uh, most of them are employed, which is kind of helpful too. <laughs> so they can travel and do things like that and listen to more podcasts. Next. Uh, how long do they listen? Well, uh, as you can see from the pie chart, they listen to a lot <laughs> uh, between anywhere from hours to minutes, right? I'll let you digest that chart for a few seconds. Next slide. Top 10 mistakes for pod that podcasters make. Um, <clears throat> a lot of knowledge, but a little passion for the topic. That's usually a killer. Makes it a little bit more boring. Boring bad. Uh, no clear goal, purpose, reason for joining the show. Also a bad idea. Having a show me the money attitude, meaning only doing a podcast for money is usually a recipe for failure because you're not going to make money anytime soon with a podcast. It's going to take you a while to have an audience, number one, and to make money, number two. You have to actually have quality content and a cadence on a regular basis to come out, whether it's weekly, monthly, whatever that looks like. We'll talk about that more later. Focusing on statistics instead of existing audience, so building that audience. Don't, don't even pay attention to statistics for the first several months because you're not going to have much statistics to look at. You're going to see little blips on, if you actually were to look at them, but they're kind of irrelevant. Just keep on marketing your podcast and pushing out good content. Not having a list from the beginning, meaning a list of who you're going to push this out to and also the channels of who, where you're going to push this out to. Because you don't just push it out to Apple Podcasts and you're done. That's probably one of the first channels, but it's not the only channel anymore. Um, wanting to launch several shows at once. That's troublesome. Sorry. Hmm? That can be painful, too. Um, I've done it. Um, don't push several shows at the same same time. I usually have a, a launch date on a weekly basis. I'll, like, I'll launch one, sh one show on one day of the week and another show on a different day of the week. So I, right now I manage three on a, on a weekly basis, uh, and they release on different days of the week. And then I push them out marketing-wise the same day. Um, really bad audio quality? Yeah, well, well, we all know what that sounds like, <laughs> or not. <laughs> the lack of audio, drop-offs, all bad things that people, you know, if you were to listen to a, a, an artist, your favorite artist, and, and the audio were to drop off or have static or something like that, or wind in the noise. Which I'm not going to even attempt to blow into the mic because that would be bad. But <laughs> uh, or launching, waiting to launch until everything is perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. It's kind of like blogging. You just push it out, right? Like once it has all the elements that you're looking for, don't look for perfect. Look for good or great, right? Never perfect. There's no such thing as perfect because the bar keeps changing, whether it goes up or down, and it keeps changing every day. So don't bother for perfect. And, and there's never going to be a right time to launch. Tomorrow is maybe the right time. Um, and then, or even today. And then not releasing your, your podcast as an MP3 format, like using it as a wave or something foreign like that. So how do you create your own podcast? Next slide. So you have to pick your goals. Like why are you doing a podcast? Like are you trying to market Savannah for the sake of argument? Are you trying to talk about a very specific topic, niche or not, general or not? Um, who are you going to be your hosts and speakers? Who are you going to interview if you're going to do an interview series? Is it just going to be a banter between the two of you? Uh, I don't personally recommend monologues unless you have a talk show uh, and you'll, you're the only one on the talk show <laughs> um, and you're super famous. Um, what style are you going to have? Is it like, there's plenty of styles out there, and I invite you to take a look at those different styles if you haven't listened to podcasts. Uh, what's your theme? Like, what's your purpose, right? And what's the topic? 
kind of important? And is that topic going to be enough for you to propel you to have at least one whole season, like a year's worth of episodes, not two or three or six, right? But like 12 or more, right? And that you can keep coming up with more topics or more people to interview because people will care and you care more importantly about pushing out more content about that. Um, and then your title and cover art, make sure it's not too uh, cryptic because if you come up with a cryptic title, people will be like, I don't know what that is and I don't care. And if you have cover art that's very cryptic too, they'll be like, mm, I don't know what it is. I don't want to know. <laughs> so, uh, and then also your, your description and keywords are super, super important. This is how people find you. When people type in super specific things, like they type in, let's just say, visit Savannah or Savannah specifically, right? Or a niche topic that they care about. They want to search for those words, right? And if they don't come up and your show doesn't come up, they're never going to find it, right? So make it findable. That's super important. Uh, then how are you going to structure your episode? So typically it's like an intro, main content, call to action, meaning what do you want the people to do? Not just an ad and sales push, etc. but like what do you want them to do? Right? Do you want them to subscribe? Do you want them to rate? Do you want them to come to your thing, your event? Uh, do you want to do whatever? And then also add contact information or links so that they can follow up and you can track them and find out like where are they? Are people listening? Do people care? Right about my content? And also an outro. And that could be, all that the call to action and the contact information could be in your outro, but if that's your choice. It could be in the middle. It could be. Th- put in three times. Some people do that. Get a microphone. That's important. These are really good. Um, but there's a pile of nice ones that you don't have to spend $300 on. You can get ones for like 20 bucks. Um, but um, I would suggest recording at least three to 10 episodes before you launch. Why? Because you need a, bu- a buffer for what you're going to push out, let's say on a weekly basis. Weekly is fairly popular. Uh, I don't recommend daily because people don't have the time to listen to like an hour long episode every day. I mean, some people do this, eofire.com, <laughs> do 2000 episodes every day. Yeah, granted, he records like eight in one day and then he's done for the week, but you know, he has a, he has a system. It's great. But um, do like three to 10 and then have a bumper so and a buffer so you have Oh, I'm going to schedule. So you launch that. Let's pretend that's like two months worth, right? If you release on a monthly basis or sorry, weekly basis. Um, And then you can have a buffer of two months to record more, right? If you want to do the whole series like I do, you can. I'll show you how I do that and then release. Um, Edit your episodes using the tools or editing services. So I used to edit my own episodes and I found them to be a waste of my time to edit myself. So I find out the instructions that I need edited, uh, and then I send it out. Um, and I'll tell you what tools I use for that, uh, and or more, more importantly, services and where I have that done. Um, storage for your audio. So these are audio files, right? They're not enormous. They're a handful of megs uh, uh, per episode, basically. But they need to be somewhere. I'll tell you where I put them. But uh, Lipson and Audioboom are two audio feed places that you can put your audio files in. They also measure who's listening and where they're being listened to. Um, and you can push them out to, and um, what do you call it, aggregate it to multiple channels, which is super helpful. And I'll talk, talk to you later about what channels I aggregate it to, aside from uh, Apple Podcasts. Um, test your feed, test your equipment, subscribe yourself to making sure that you're getting the episodes. Not because you're listener number one and that's super important, but making sure that it's actually coming through because on occasion something will break and then you're like, oh, nothing's happening. Well, I better check that, right? No matter what time you're releasing. And then schedule your podcasts um, on a regular cadence. Like, like I suggested, weekly is probably the most popular. You can do monthly. Yearly is not a podcast. <laughs> that's, that's a book. <laughs> Next. Thank you. Uh, scheduling interviews. So I do strictly interviews now. I used to do monologues. For some reason, that's not too exciting. I don't know why. Um, but most people don't want to listen to one person talking. They want to listen to some kind of interaction. So if you interview someone, and I'll, sh- I'll show you my formula of how I do this, 
and I recycle it no matter what the niche topic is. I only talk about niche topics, super niche topics, but I make sure there's an audience. So I expect to reach out to about 100 people and get a response of two to 20 people out of that. That's typical for marketing. If, if, you are, if anybody's done marketing before, um, if you get better results, great, super, you're awesome. Um, don't expect that realistically that much. But I'm very, very open to whom I'm talking to. I'll send them. What I typically do is I reach out to LinkedIn. That's my channel of preference. And I'll reach out to 1,000 people. And of that 1,000 people, you can see the demographics, right? Like the numbers, you can equate to, I'll get potentially 2 to 20% of that audience saying, ooh, yes, I want, and I say, I'm very overt and transparent about what I want to do. I say, hey, I'd like to interview about X, something that you know about. And I'd like you to hear what you have to say about X. And here's the questions I'm going to ask you. And I'd really like to schedule you in October for the sake of argument, right? Because we're in September. And so that it gives them some time to digest the questions, ponder them, say, hmm, does this have value to me? Yes, of course. It's an ego stroke. Sure, no problem. And it typically is. So I explain what the purpose of the interview is, how long it's going to be. Mine are five to 15 minutes, the total interview time. Um, and that's trimmed down to maybe four to 10 minutes with editing purposes. Um, and then uh, what else? Um, I message them a few times on LinkedIn if they don't reply. So yes, I do follow up a number of times because don't expect to like email them once and then of course, everyone's going to read your email. Everyone has a 100% open rate on email, right? No, it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> if you text message them, yeah, maybe better, but not so much. Um, and then you have a cadence on the follow-up. I have usually a weekly follow-up to make sure that they will be interested or not. And if they say no, uh, sure, no problem. I'm not going to be offended. Plenty of people say no for a variety of reasons, and it's irrelevant what the reason is. Um, and then um, scheduling. I'll talk about the scheduling uh, real quick. Uh, I use uh, Assistant 2. You can use Calendarly. So instead of going back and forth on email saying, oh, I'd like to do Tuesday. Oh, I can't do Tuesday. How about Thursday? Oh, I can do Thursday. Can you do 2 o'clock? No, I can't do 2 o'clock. How about Friday? And, and doing this back and forth for 12 centuries. Um, why not just send them, here's three days with all the available times I have in next week for the sake of argument because they said next week is great and then you give them the time frames and they just literally just click on it so i typically send them one email after they say yes i'm interested in being interviewed for your podcast and i'll include in the bottom of the email the the clicks from uh the assistant too where they just literally click on oh tuesday at 2 p.m you're available great done and then it sends me and them an invite with the information with the the Zoom link, because I interview everyone on Zoom. I don't actually physically go visit them. You can, you'll get better audio quality that way, potentially. Um, but Zoom works great because Zoom audio records, video records, if you wanted to, and uh, will even split the audio between you and the other speaker, which is really amazing for a whole $14.99 a month, which is nothing, to be honest with you. Yeah. Anyways, next. So preparing yourself for audio recording. Uh, you want to test your audio and software each time. Uh, full disclosure, I interviewed someone, a very large red brand company in the States, which I waited a month for, and then the audio failed, the audio recording. And I wait, had to wait another whole month and set, tell them, ah, oh, the audio recording software failed. Can we do it again? And they're like, sure, which is nice of them, but you want to avoid that. That's only happened like twice ever, and I've done like mm, 500 episodes, something like that. So, you know, it happens. So test your equipment. Um, and then confirm it that a lot of the beginning of the calls that I have with people is testing their audio. Because don't expect them to be as audiophile-ish as you are, right? Because you might have a mic and you might be all set up like we are here. But in reality, people might have like their laptop open in a big open conference room, which sounds terrible. Or they're on a cell phone or they're on a Bluetooth device. Also sounds terrible. Avoid those as much as possible. And I literally have them, if, if the, I ask them politely, can you switch to something like a wired earbud? At the very minimum, that's very helpful. Or can you go in a smaller room and not on the, you know, the big triangle thing? That sounds terrible too. Um, don't do any of those if you can. 
in a perfect world, they will have a mic. Highly, highly doubtful. I've seen some people, they, uh, some podcasters require the guests to buy a mic. <laughs> That's a little excessive in my opinion. Uh, or some people will mail them my mic. Don't expect it to get it back, but that's a different issue. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, so yeah, audio testing, then uh, schedule a few episodes and interviews back to back if you can. So I'll record up to like five in a day, um, depending on their availability more than mine. Avoid dairy and peanut butter. You know why? <laughs> Phlegm, bad things in your throats. Honey is good. Water is good. Tea is good. Coffee bad, sugar bad. Uh, modulate your reading, your breathing. Excuse me, your reading too. Um, don't breathe into the mic. I won't do that right now. And consider a pop filter because you know when you say B P B, all those things, and you blow into the mic, those sound bad. Wind sounds bad too. Be aware of uh, background noises. So if I'm using literally a, a recorder, like my phone, for the sake of argument, I've done that before. I'll turn on the, the voice recorder on my phone, but I'll, I'll test it with the other person in the room and check, like, is there a fan going on? Do I hear that in the audio recording? Do I hear the buzzing of the light above me? Do I hear a tapping on the floor? Do I hear traffic? Is it audible on the mic? Right. And I'll check it. Right. And then I'll, uh, I'll check the audio and then, and then record or we'll move. Right. And go to a quieter place in a perfect world. We would go in a closet with lots of clothes, but that's a little creepy. Um, <laughs> you can do that for audiobooks yourself. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, check for background noise. Um, you can do on Google Hangouts. You can use your phone uh, on landline. You can use Skype um, and audio recording tools for Skype. I personally found zoom.us to be one of the best. Uh, but be aware of uh, drop-offs of your bandwidth, and you'll notice them because you'll hear like a sentence getting cut off. And if I hear like a big drop-off, I'll literally ask him, "Oh, can you repeat that answer or your your last answer?" So I get two streams of that, and I'll just take the best of that. And I, I won't be shy about it. You have to literally say, uh, "I'm sorry, I, I heard nothing. Can you repeat what you said?" Um, and what else? But yeah. Wi-Fi connections, uh, we all know that they drop off sometimes, depending on our provider, um, and interference. Next. So connecting and reuse tests. Make sure you have context of, do the, does your audience, the audience who's listening and the guests actually care and know why you're doing this and what it's for? Uh, ask clarification questions. So if they start using acronyms that you have no clue what they're saying, or you don't expect the audience to know what they're saying. Like, they're just like, oh, the, the ERP is so amazing. It's like, what is that? Really a retirement program? Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> um, uh, what else? Goals. What's it for? Who's it for? Errors. Take a pause if there's an error, because that'll be a good inkling. And when you look at the audio feed when, with the little waves and all that, you'll see like there's a pause. And you can easily trim that out and say, oh, and I'll, I'll say, if I, if I stutter or if I have an error, take a pause. Repeat what you were, you were going to say. Say it better. I might say it three times because I stumble on my words, or they will. And hopefully they won't be like, uh, 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 the whole time, because that's a lot of editing. <laughs> most speakers are not that bad, which is good. And they'll ask, because most people have never spoken before in audio form, and they're really nervous about it. Because they they've never heard their own voice. Most people have never heard their voice and they hate it. And when they're like, oh, I hate my voice. Ugh. And you get used to it, even if you hate it. Um, what else? Uh, time constraints. So I usually constrain against 15 minute calls. And that sounds very little, but you get a lot done because it's not like chit chit. It's like, oh, yeah, like nice weather we're having. Oh, how's the dog? How's the kids? It's like, wander, wander, wander. How about, how about the content? This kind of matters for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, that's why we're here. And then um, identify who you're speaking with. I actually have them self-identify. So rather than lot having them send me an enormous bio, I'll show you the question. The very first question I ask them is, who are you and what do you do? And then that leaves them wide open. I, Hi, I'm Superman and I fly 
blah, 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 whatever. They can say whatever they want, however they want to self-identify. No problem. I'm cool with that. But I don't have to read their 15-page bio either and go, oh, wait, hold on. I, I missed page four, volume six. <laughs> um, the process. How are you going to identify them? Is it rapid Q&A? Is it candor, like back and forth, casual conversation? In my opinion, I'll, I'll give you my, my opinion as far as podcasting is concerned. Expectations are only increasing as far as listener audiences are concerned, and yours as well, realistically. So expectations are increasing and patients are decreasing. So give them the maximum value and the maximum high value content in the minimum amount of time, right? So I actually cut or usually never include music. My intro is usually, usually about five seconds long. It's like literally the title of the, of the thing, what it's about, and my name. And today I'm going to talk about blah, with blah, with person X. Great, done, moving on. Hi, person X. And then follow up. So I, me personally, I send them the audio, edited audio file afterwards, the edited version, not the raw one. And I have them approve it. So I get their consent to release it. So it's really upfront. And there's no super secret hidden agenda. It's like, this is what you said. This is what you wanted to say. Yes, no. I was like, oh, I'm not supposed to say blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, we can trim that out. No problem. And my editor will take that out. It's no problem. No matter how long or short. I interviewed a well-known three-letter agency, which will remain nameless, uh, around a certain war. And they're like, oh, yeah, that 14-minute episode, we trimmed it ourselves to seven minutes. I was like, okay, sure, no problem. And this is what you're supposed to release. And I'm like, okay, I can do that, no problem. Fair, still good, con just good quality, good content. Yes, please. Do you, the people you interview, do you have them sign a release form? I do not, no. So, so everything has an email trail saying, in the beginning, here's what I want to do and here's what I want to interview about. Here's the questions I want to ask you, and here's the format, and all that. And once they say yes, and they approve it, uh, I literally have a paper trail of saying this is when they approved the time, and then this is the audio that they approve because it's a linked it's a linked file that exists in permanence, and they approve the audio. It, and usually it's them and their entity, whatever whoever they work for, typically, right? Um, so editing tools, uh, there's a bunch. Anybody use anything else out there? So there's uh, GarageBand, Audacity, Pro Tools, Upwork. That's what I use. I use Upwork. Upwork is a service. It's not an editing tool. So I find a guy. I found several people, to be perfectly honest, uh, in the Philippines because they're 12 hours behind us or, be, or ahead of us. Um, so when I go to bed at 10 p.m., I send them a bunch of episodes. And when I wake up at 10 a.m., it's done because they work during their day. So I sleep. They work. It's great. So, <laughs> and uh, so I pay them not so much, very little. Actually, I pay them per episode, per minute of the actual audio, of the finished audio that I want. Because I say, here's the instructions. I want you to start there, take out this, 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 edit that, that, that. And here, put the intro, outro there. Done. That's episode one. Repeat for episode two, three, four, etc. And I'll send up to 10 episodes like that. So there's record, 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 edit, 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 approve, approve, approve. And then after that, I have transcribe, transcribe, transcribe. And then check the transcription against the audio. So I'll show you the tools that I use for, tra for that. Do they transcribe or is that a different service? That's a different service. So I used to have humans do that, but they were really slow for some reason. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> uh, since we're all human in this room. Um, I used to use rev.com. And Rev owns another company called Temi, T-E-M-I dot com. Uh, they both have free uh, trials. I highly recommend trying them out amongst any others that do transcription. And they do video and audio transcription, which is super helpful. And granted, every transcription you will ever see, there's nuances in the voice. There's accents. There's how we pronounce certain things. Um, so there's never a 100% perfect transcription out there. So you have to check it against the audio. 
and somebody with context of what you're talking about needs to check it. Because if I see dam, most people think there's an N at the end. Mine is only DAM because it means digital asset management. That's capital DAM because it's an acronym for me. Most people who don't know dam would be like, oh, yeah, you mean the hydroelectric dam? No. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Uh, how long should your podcast be? So daily, not people, a lot of people don't follow this agenda for uh, exactly. Like I've seen um, EO Fire, he does like longer than 30 minutes I've seen. Uh, and he's just one example that does daily. But daily is, in my, in my opinion, people don't have the bandwidth to consume daily podcasts five to seven days a, a week. Uh, weekly is much more digestible, in my opinion. Bi-weekly is okay too, but you, you don't have to have it that long either because like, I think it was a Tim Ferriss, Tim Ferriss show. He used to have like three hour podcasts, great episodes, you know, fantastic speakers, etc., celebrities, whatever, famous people that have a lot of very interesting things to say, but it's a three hour podcast. You know, it's like a three hour cruise <laughs> and it wrecks on an island and then no one leaves. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, don't do annual. That's not podcasting. Like we said, moving on next. How to build a podcast episode, uh, audience. That's really important because you actually want people to listen to it aside from you and your mom, right? Uh, and your colleague. So great content to consume more episodes, not longer is my opinion. Great content that you can't find anywhere else. Meaning original evergreen, Stuff that's not recycled from the web. It's like, oh, I read Wikipedia, Audible Forum. Yay. No, no one cares. Um, consistent cadence, meaning regular, every, it's released every Thursday morning at 5 a.m. So Eastern. So when you wake up in the morning, whether you're in London or California or here, great. You can hear it. Um, creating a new category. You can do that too. I did uh, because you have that blue ocean strategy. Build a following using marketing tools, which some of you more know more about that than I do. Uh, so using social media, using email lists, uh, and getting those thousand true fans. Before that, that there's a link to the the paper who, of the guy who wrote that. Um, if you have a thousand true friends, you can do anything because they'll buy anything that you produce because they're like, ooh, they're like your, your first Patreon fans if you use Patreon. Um, measure over time, not the day of, right? And to see what works and what doesn't because some people will want more of this stuff. And so if you vary it a little bit and say, well, I'm going to give you more stuff about marketing. It's like, oh, yeah, there's a lot of followers on that. Or it's like, oh, I'm going to give you stuff all about janitorial services. Uh, maybe, yes, great, super. Oh, I'm going to give you stuff about equipment. It's like, oh, well, that gets stale really quick because they change over too, too fast. Yeah. Who knows? So know your audience and what they care about. And then you can measure, like, how many downloads did this one get over two months? It's like, oh, well, that could really good following. Was it because they were a good speaker? Is it because they gave a lot of value, new things that you've never heard before? That's important, right? And don't stop posting or else your audience will vanish after a few months. Um, next. So examples, I'm going to give you the six that I manage now. So my longest standing one is called Another Damn Podcast. So I'll give you a very brief history about that. I used to have Another Damn Blog. I still do. Um, spelled the same way. Uh, it's about digital asset management. It was started, the blog was started in 2009. Uh, a year later, I decided, well, Maybe other people have something to say about the topic because I had a lot to say about it. So I, I wrote a hundred blog posts and then it got really good traffic and I was like, and nobody else was write, really writing about it aside from vendors. And so I started interviewing people that I knew in the field that were also doing similar work, right? So all of you know people who are doing similar work to you and that you value their opinion, what they have to say about whatever you care about. And so I started interviewing them on a weekly or monthly basis and releasing on a weekly ba basis. And eventually I slowed down to monthly because I noticed that people would have the cadence to listen on a monthly basis and not as much on a weekly. 
because they're busy. I don't know. People, are, people have schedules, aside from me. So I've released about 228 episodes so far. Um, next. Tagging.tech. So related to DAM, I wanted to, I had this, this problem I wanted to understand better. So I interviewed the top people in the world who understood human-generated metadata, meaning AIs, versus, oh, sorry, human-generated meaning I'm typing in keywords, like tagging, like how you tag photos, versus machine-generated, like how it's self-identifying, like, oh, this space happens to be this person, or that stuff. Um, I want to understand what, how is this evolving, when is one going to replace the other, and ask them those questions. And so I interviewed about 20 people. That's the only people who wanted to be interviewed about it, interestingly enough. Everyone else was kind of quiet for a variety of reasons, which I understood later, but it's okay. So I released 20 episodes. I got it out of my system. And what I did is I transcribed it and created a book out of it. Easy way to create a book. Next. Uh, next, I wanted to understand rights management, intellectual property rights management. So when you download audio, video, text, graphics, photos, let's just say music, for example, right? We all know that music is licensed by said artists and said record company, et cetera, et cetera, right? And they hold the rights to license it out, like, you know, Taylor Swift or whomever your favorite artist is. And you have to pay them money to not only download the song for a license to listen to that song forever and ever or whatever, or stream it, um, but also that replies to photos and video and lots of other things. So I want to understand more of that. So I interviewed about 30 people about all the stuff around that. Yes? So you mind coming over and talking oh. <laughs> you can introduce yourself. Yeah. To okay. Yeah. My name is Justin. Uh, just a question on the right text. Did you release those thirty episodes weekly, or how often did you release them? Great question. Yeah. So it was weekly. It was weekly. Um, so right tech was weekly. Um, so it was uh, tagging dot tech. Um, next. So somebody asked me to write a book about blockchain. I didn't really care about blockchain, to be perfectly honest. But my process is I interview pile people all over the world who know something about blockchain and care about it and know something about it and are involved in it specifically. And so I did 40 episodes of that. So I interviewed people from Hong Kong and the United States and South America and everywhere else. And then I transcribed that and put that into a book. And I'm still giving talks on a, twice a year on that topic because for some reason people still care about blockchain. So I, that gives you speaking opportunities, interestingly enough. Same thing with most of these podcasts. They give you speaking opportunities. So you're invited to conferences because you're an authority figure by default on said topic that you're podcasting about. And then they want to like invite you and say, oh, can you do episodes while you're at our conference? And I, sometimes I do. I'll find more people that are actually relevant to my podcast and be like, ooh, can I review you and you and you? Who happens to be like on the speaker circuit? It's like, you know, super famous person or not so much. Some people have never spoken before, which is okay. Moving on. User adoption podcast. So one of the challenges with a lot of things, whether it's hardware, software, anything, is the adoption, sorry, user adoption. Not the adoption of users, but users adopting your product, service, whatever it happens to be. So I interviewed people, about 57, and with all of these specifically this one too, and the next one. I found all the people I wanted to interview within a month or two. I interviewed them within a month, and I edited them the next month, and then I transcribed the next one, and then I scheduled and released the next month. So within a, about three to six months, I did a whole series, like 57 episodes, and I, now I'm at 61 because I'm recording more because I'm at the end now. <laughs> so uh, it, it'll either go dormant, like I'll go dormant on it and those episodes will continue existing or people will say, ooh, I want to be interviewed too, which I'll validate or not. We'll see. Next. EIR podcast. This is my latest one. So on Valentine's Day, I had an idea, ooh, I'm an EIR. I literally was, which means entrepreneur in residence. 
I'll give you a very brief synopsis. Uh, successful entrepreneurs that have already like done something successful and they want to show other entrepreneurs how to do it, like startups, right? Uh, universities, law firms, venture capital firms, banks, large businesses have sometimes entrepreneurs in residence. So it's like, why don't I interview other entrepreneurs in residence and learn from them, right? Best practices kind of thing. So I found 37 of them. Um, so I validated the idea, I researched the idea, saying, is there an audience? Yes. Is there enough of them that would care? Yes. I found uh, like five to 10,000 of them on LinkedIn. I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll hire somebody on Upwork to find me the, the list of the 5,000 and their LinkedIn profile. So all I have to do is go click and I get their LinkedIn profile and message them, which you can do on Facebook or lots of other social media networks and for the relevant people that you care about that you want to reach out to and say, ooh, I'd really like to interview about Topic X. And they say yes or no. And if I said, connect with me if you're interested. Pretty easy, right? So binary. It's like, if you're not interested, ignore me, move on with life. If they connect with me, that means I get their email, click on email, send them a form email. Dear name, I'd like to interview in October. Here's the questions I want to answer, ask you. I'll show you the questions in a minute. And uh, here's the format. Here's what we're going to do. It's free. It'll be released to on said channels. If you care, great. Let's schedule it on the bottom of the email. Click here if you want to be, you know, on the fourth of October at two o'clock. Great, super. If not, I'll follow up a few times. If I hear dead air, move on. Um, so I recorded thirty-seven of them. Um, you can go to this link when you get this deck. Um, and click on that article. I actually journaled the whole process from February 14th all the way to May 1st when I launched it. So that was a handful of months where I created the entire series in a few months. And step by step of like when I transcribed, how, I, how many people I followed up with, et cetera, et cetera. I was originally aiming for 54 because I was going to launch with three episodes, the same day one, and then one every single week, right? So 54 51, etc. So a whole year's worth of podcasts. That'd be super. I only got 37. Eh, it's okay. I'll live. Moving on. Um, I host all of my podcasts on WordPress. And then the aggregator is, I use Audio, Audio Boom. Um, and I find it very helpful. I like it better than Lipson. That's my personal preference. You can use whatever you want. But I usually start by putting in the, the usual acceptance rate thing is you put it on Apple podcasts it used to be called iTunes, but they separated it. They have a separate app now. Anyways, um, you push it on iTunes. It's still called iTunes when you push it up. I don't know why. Um, they'll change that eventually. And then it, when it gets accepted, pretty much everyone else will follow because they're the granddaddy. Apple podcasts is the granddaddy because they created the format for the most part. Moving on. These are the questions I asked. I go to a brief intro. It's usually like a standard intro that's already recorded for every single episode. Or I just repeat the exact same thing every single time. Then I literally ask them, who are you and what do you do? Very open-ended question, right? You can answer that however you wish. Then how are you involved with the topic you're talking about? And then what are the biggest challenges and successes with the topic we're talking about? fill in the blank. And then I asked this question, which a lot of people like, it's like, what advice would you like to share with other people doing blank or aspiring to do blank, right? So that want to do blank when they graduate from school or looking for a job or whatever. And that's very helpful to people. And then here's the promo part, right? The Where can we find out more information about what you do and about blank? So they can say whatever they feel like, right? It's like, oh, I want to tell you about the latest thing that I have. It's really amazing. I have a book and it's blah, blah, blah. It's great. Super. Awesome. And you can find my email at blah, blah, blah. Super. Great. No problem. And then quick outro with my link, my contact information. If they care, soft push, right? Information. Some people will follow up. Rarely will they. It's okay. 
this is goes down my sales funnel. This is advertising and marketing for me because I become a thought leader in that space. So if they care, if they want, this is generalized information typically or specific to that company that they talked about, so their company, but I'm finding these sources for other people and pushing that out, that information out, right? And so here's where I aggregate my podcasts. So obviously we have Amazon Alexa, Apple Podcasts, which used to be called iTunes, Audio Boom, CastBox, Deezer, Google Podcasts, Himalaya, which is China, big, big market. Uh, iHeart, Radio.com, Radio Public, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn. So that's just the ones I aggregate on. There's piles of others that you can find if you want. Are you going to cover why China is such a big audience? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. They For some reason, they have a billion plus people, and a lot of people have cell phones there. And they, so yes, thank you for asking me. Um, like I mentioned last time, we had a meeting, a meetup here. Um, 20% of my audience is from China. And the reason why they listen to it is I have transcripts on some of my podcasts and they follow along the audio to the transcription so they can read and learn English, the ESOL audience. Makes sense, right? Which is cool. So, yeah. Sure, yeah, which is really cool, right? So, so I'm helping the ESOL audience learn English. And First thing, where they learn blockchain uh, right <laughs> yeah great well they probably know about it because they mine 70 percent of it there so anyways <laughs> anyways long story short so monetizing your podcast i personally don't put any ads whatsoever on my podcast that's just my choice my my personal preference sorry um but you can advertise like a radio and have a message and what a lot of people do is they'll say oh check out eofire.com slash promo code x right and that leads, so when you go to the website, right, of Marketer X or Ford.com slash whatever your magic code is, if they buy a car or if they buy the thing or the service or they spend X dollars to buy the book or whatever, you get a cut, which is a great money in your pocket. So a lot of podcasters do that if they have the audience. You can sell... T-shirts and stickers and audiobooks and ebooks and software and online courses and all that fun stuff. Um, there's a threshold to what people will buy, so don't expect like like 100 of them will buy. That's a ridiculous number. So it's back to the marketing world. You know, it's probably like one two percent that's going to buy, unless they see a lot of value and say, "Oh, I need this. This is like my hair's on fire, and I need it because it's going to extinguish my hair." Um, so yes, you can sell your books. You can sell your consulting services. You can host live events. I've seen some people try to push like the webinar kind of thing and they record it and then they try to sell the podcast. That rarely works, honestly. Most podcasts are free. Um, you can sell co coaching services or, or consulting services for that matter. Affiliate products, um, that's helpful too. Public speaking, well, if you know how you speak well at, on Podcast X, your podcast, you might be called at your local conference saying, oh, you speak up a Savannah? Oh, well, we have a Savannah conference. Can you come, blah, 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 talk about that? And of course, Patreon. Everybody know what Patreon is? Yeah, yeah. It's a really cool service. So they pay you to continue doing your art. So if you're a podcaster or you're um, any person producing content for the sake of argument that people want, they'll pay you to continue doing that on a cyclical basis, like a monthly basis, like a subscription. And then you give them advanced access to that or freebies or whatever that looks like. So the repeatable process that I use is I research. I research my audience. I research who I'm going to interview. I research the topic. And make sure that people actually care, that their audience is big enough. So when, you, when I go to LinkedIn, I see, I type in entrepreneurs in residence and I get X number of hits. It, if you research your topic and it's like, oh, 200 people. Hmm. How many of them to say yes? Mm, probably not many. Is that worth it? Maybe not. Should I broaden my topic? Should I change my topic? Likely. Know your audience. Like, what do they care about? What do they want to learn about? Ask them, right? So you go to a conference, talk to your colleagues online, text them, whatever, social media, message them, and ask them, what do they want to know? 
what, what's the burning questions they want to know? So, so if you hear it more and more, it's like, oh, I really want to know how they do blah, blah, blah. Great. Let's find out how blah, blah, blah happens. And then reach out for interviews. You got to follow up. Schedule those recording times. Record those episodes. Edit. Transcribe. Transcription, it, I, it, not only does it help your SEO, which is really important for obvious reasons, but it also helps the ESOL audience. It also, it, literally, I, know, I have people telling me, oh, I, I read your podcasts all the time. I'm like, no, don't do that. <laughs> Just listen to them. But they follow along. They either follow along or they read them. And sometimes they, they don't have the time to digest the whole seven-minute episode because it's so long. Oh. So they literally go, I, I break it down so they know I have five questions in there. And they go, I only want to know about challenges. So they go to the challenges section and they read that. That's fine. I'm okay with that. My, my feelings aren't hurt, but they can do that. And I enable that with a transcription, which costs me a whole 10 cents a minute. Uh, check the content before release. Kind of important. So I bounce it off literally the person I'm interviewing because it's their reputation, not just mine. Kind of important to think about. Uh, schedule those episodes, measure it, and then repeat. So I've done six, actually eight. I've turned off two because they didn't have the traffic. I didn't really have much to say. I didn't really care about the topic anymore. Kind of died, killed both of them. So you can do that. It's allowed. So why create a podcast? Why, why do you guys want to create a podcast? You want, you want to start? You want to, sorry, why don't you come up here? Introduce yourself. Um, yeah, it, and even um, if you don't know, you know. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to come up. Um, I think uh, I don't know. Like, say, like what you do, you pick a topic. Mm -hmm. Maybe one episode is not enough. Correct. To you know, explore the topic that you're interested in. I agree. So it kind of requires more time. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that's. Yeah. You know, that's why important is to mm -hmm. create a podcast series. Totally, yeah. yeah. Because it, you want more than three to ten episodes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 About anything. Yeah. Otherwise, it's kind of like, why am I listening? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, some science topic, you kind of need Could be. You know, mm -hmm. more episodes than just one mm -hmm. 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about yourself? Uh, well, I'm a social media manager, so I just saw the Meetup uh, group, and I'm just here to learn more about uh, any tool uh, that my clients would like to dive in, basically. Okay, yeah. awesome. Fantastic. Thank you. You guys introduce sure. yourself. Do, oh, sure. do you have a question? or? or? Um, I don't think well, what, what was your motivation to start a podcast? Mm, yeah, good question. Oh, um, Okay, I guess I answered. So uh, I'm a public affairs manager for the Air National Guard. Um, so I manage the voice for the Air National Guard. And I was like, I don't really know how to have a voice for myself. Mm. And I thought that was really important because there's that there's times um, where, you know, they might be doing something I disagree with. And I feel like my name's on the line. Mm. So I want to have something out there to kind of balance. If there's some like negative news out there somewhere, I can have my reputation still stay the same and have a presence that way. So... I recognize the need for it, but I think I've always wanted to have a podcast. Um, as a creative outlet or as a work outlet? As both? a both. both. Okay. So I okay. offered to make a podcast and they didn't really see a need for it, which, you know, I, I understand. Um, but I definitely had my own. I wanted to do it somehow. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And so, like, the advice is to go, like, the, the riches are in the niches. But I'm kind of like a person that's all over the place. And... <laughs> I, 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 You're I, not the only one. Right. I, I, I'm there's sure a, there's a few others. Yeah, there's a lot of things that I love <laughs> that I want to explore a lot of. So, um, I it, it's even if we don't get a huge following, it's still something I enjoy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, that's important to enjoy it. Yeah. Because yeah. why why do it if you're not gonna enjoy it? Exactly. It's a task, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? You want to add <laughs> sure, please. Um, I guess for me, like I've listened to podcasts for such a long time, and it's been a way to kind of explore like what other people know and what other people are doing and so being able to contribute to that mm -hmm. and then um when amber had reached out to me about wanting to do a podcast i was like yeah i was like i really like this idea um it's a great way to learn new information but also inform people about hey this is how these things impact your life and if you want to make things better like these are things that you can do because being um, I guess like activism and like making the world a better place is very important to me. So um, yeah, so that's kind of why I jumped on 
Awesome. Great. I'll speak to Art. Please. Yeah, please. <laughs> You, you good? You good? Oh no! I, oh no! I don't want to be in the, <laughs> the, hair in the back of your head camera. to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go back over here. Okay, um, so for us at Visit Savannah, it's a little bit different than what everybody else. Probably we're going in the reverse order because we already have a really strong audience. We have two hundred thousand followers. You know, all kind, we're running all these social media channels at all times. But now we're trying to tap into that audience and transfer them into a podcast. And for a place that we're selling the visuals of Savannah so often and the tangible experience to just be relying on something that's audio focused is, I think, really interesting. But we're also trying to humanize our brand a little bit because people just think we're like bots behind like pretty photos of Forsyth Park. But there's something so uh, personal about like the timbre of someone's voice and things like that that's so just something that DMOs destination marketing organizations have not touched on so we're kind of trying to be the front runners so if we come out with one we hope you guys listen to it <laughs> I, I mean I think if I if I would to do a podcast uh, you know coming coming from my background being a pastor of a church I would probably want to explore issues of faith and popular culture or faith in the environment uh, or even faith in how to be a better person and how to treat each other better. You, you should check out the ones that exist already. I know there's a lot. Uh, yeah, and, and check out and use the best of those mm -hmm. and model that. Are there ones espe especially about faith in the environment? That I don't know personally, okay. but but you can check. Huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll talk for not too Please, please, please. I'm Tyler, it's co host of the Creative Truth, and I had heard the word podcast like a million times for a decade or so before finally I met uh, Raz and we just had similar interests. He says, I do live streaming. I do podcasting. I said, I do videography. He goes, and we just were like, we need to collaborate. We need to collaborate somehow. And so he's like, well, we should start a podcast. And I'm like, well, I don't have a, I'm not an iPhone person, so I don't have iTunes, so I don't know, I don't even know where to get podcasts. I knew nothing really about them or the format. And then I started diving in and um, after producing some episodes and learning about how the process works and then meeting people and learning how to automate it, I really have, have come to understand the not only like the potential, this is the Wild West right now. This is like a new medium that people are adopting. And so um, for you, for your audience, um, basically it's a great way for you to reach people where they are. So if you're a marketer, um, there's, you know, there's all the different platforms and like the, the wrong way to do it is just push your content out on every platform the same way. Like each platform has its own audience. And um, for podcasters, it's just all niche, niche, niche. The, I love the, what you said, the, the niches have the riches, right? Yeah, that's not my quote. I think that's like another famous podcast for like Pat Flynn or something. <laughs> well, it's, it's awesome. And, it, 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 and so uh, with working with Visit Savannah as well, um, it is a very niche audience that we want people from outside of Savannah to come to Savannah. And um, so we're just kind of exploring that opportunity and, and, and hopefully being the market innovators in the destination marketing space. Um, so coming soon, stay tuned. And something to keep in mind with Business Savannah is there's like, um, there's like a whole, which I blew up this, oh, I just shocked <laughs> myself. <laughs> You're still alive. <laughs> Um, there's like a whole podcast about like how to make the most of your Disney experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't listen to it, but I hear about it all the time with like finding the, the niche in a uh, tourism cause your, your audience may not be consistent. So right. yeah. I'll let okay. you have that back. <laughs> what else? Next slide. Yeah. Sure. Next slide. Yep. So I added some additional resources in here. Uh, here's some books that you may want to check out. You can find them probably at your local library, or you can ask your local library to carry them um, if, if they're not on there. Or you can find them on Amazon, of course. Uh, you can click on these on the side deck and order them that way if you want. Moving on. There's some uh, resources, Audio Boom, Blueberry. There's actually a uh, directory. It's actually a, a list of powerful podcasters. You'll recognize all the names on there. Um, don't reach out to them day one. They won't talk to you day one. You have to have like a few episodes and a, an audience before they actually care to reply. 
Um, but uh, they're all on there. And then um, Free Podcast Course, brought to you by a well-known podcaster, not me, uh, Lipson, Podcast Cheap Sheets. Thanks you, thank you, Pat Flynn, uh, Podcast Guide, Podcasting A to Z, in case you need a glossary of what does that thing mean, uh, Podcast Websites, and then I added links to Rev and Temi, uh, which is the transcription sites that I use. Next. Uh, so if you want to find this uh, presentation, you can go to SlideShare, which is part of LinkedIn, and you type in my name, and you'll find it very easily. So want to start a podcast network? Yes. Right. <laughs> are, are we doing this? Savannah? Uh, yeah, we are. We, that's uh, really um, what we didn't know is that... Uh, how many people in the in the low country were producing podcasts, um, but we know people are interested in it. So Raz and I uh, basically just put the meetup together to see who else is out there, who's thinking about it, who's in the process of starting it, who's already has 500 episodes and six different podcasts, and, and, and we've learned a lot. Um, and so we don't know exactly um, how a podcast network would uh, – work but we now we know who else is out there and and we're all interested and, and passionate about mm -hmm. about this this um this industry mm -hmm. and this medium um so yeah yeah so we'd love to start a podcast right. network I, I know there's there's another one in charleston um they meet at a specific restaurant uh, granted we're a few hours from charleston here in savannah so <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> So, Shannon, Shannon says we're better. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you actually are more numerous because uh, when I see, I'm I'm a member of both meetups. So this is the Savannah Meetup uh, Podcasting Savannah meetup. Podcast Network. Savannah Podcast Podcast Network, and and it's a meetup about it, right? Yep. Yeah, where we meet monthly now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I assume that's the goal to meet monthly about this, yes, unless there's a big major holiday in the way. We might outgrow the uh, well assault. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sure. Please, plug. please, please. And, and Raz, um, I'm going to call Raz call? in here. Yeah. yeah. The other guy who, yep. who does this on a regular basis. So <laughs> we're we're filming today's or we're streaming today's episode from the Savannah Pod Box, which is Savannah's first and only dedicated podcast studio. Uh, this is where we're hosting today's meetup. But we might actually outgrow this space. Um, you know, we're already pretty tight. But uh, Raz came in. He's got a couple things to add to that and tell you a little bit more about the, the meetups and the network. Yeah, so thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, anybody, I was watching on my phone, so I was, I was keeping up with you guys. Uh, and Jeff, I had an idea for a, like a church podcast. So where, like, I, I want to interview um, all religions, though. You know, and all backgrounds and all faiths, just to kind of learn why everybody thinks the same and why everybody thinks different. Anyway, so maybe we can collaborate on something like that later on. Yeah. Uh, but thank you guys for coming. This is uh, the Power Boss has been a creative truth. Here, thank you. You already gave. Are you done? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. All right. cool. We can take more questions if you want, but yeah. Uh, how are we doing on time? We'll talk. Yeah. We'll just we'll network a little bit more. Sure. So, how are we doing on time? I don't know if you got a chance to give a little call out yeah. to you. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so if you have any questions, here or now, or, or can we can Facebook and et cetera give us questions or not so much? Yeah. Uh, we, does anyone have any questions online? I see two people watching. We had Cynthia tune in and Tersh, uh, who was here mm -hmm. earlier. He tuned in a little bit. Yeah. But no questions have come through. Okay. Like any that. questions here? No, the, yes. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> so it's recorded. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, so in terms of building your audience, building when you started podcasting, um, what were the main challenges that you face you know, in building an audience? Because it's not, you know, uh, I guess it's tough you know, to spread your message and building your audience. Yeah, yeah. So, so the building your message, it's, it's like, uh, how long is your episode? How are, are people caring or caring to listen? And are they listening to the whole thing, part of it? Not all tools will measure how long they listen. And that's the challenge, right? You don't know how, if they're listening for the first 10 minutes of your hour-long podcast. They're listening to the whole thing. So I make a sh I'm, I maximize the content and minimize the time that I give that, that, that quality content in there. Um, so I speak very little unless it's a question or a, a clarification in there or I have a contextual thing to add in there. 
that's important to the question or whatever or clarify. But um, typically it's the building of the audience is really important and it's based on the quality content. If you keep pushing quality content and a, a steady cadence, they, they know every Tuesday or every whatever at X hour, they'll get a download if they subscribe or they, they can check all the last 10 episodes and it won't take them 12 years to, to digest them. They can search for it and they can search for it based on the keywords that you're talking about. The keywords are super important. The description is super important. And the cover art makes sense. The title makes sense, right? Make it very, very simple, right? That you're talking about digital asset management, right? That you're talking about X. That you're talking about whatever your topic happens to be, whether it's scientific or religious or uh, marketing or, or uh, tourism or whatever it happens to be. Make it super clear to your audience so that if they're thinking about, oh, I really want to know, and people are curious, right? And curiosity should be fed. And podcasting is one of the fastest growing mediums for that because people don't want to read anymore or very little. They want to read, but less, <laughs> let's just say, <laughs> 140 characters, <laughs> whatever the number is uh, today. So they want to digest and consume. They want to consume a lot. They want to consume quality as quickly and as digestibly as possible with less in my opinion, less fluff. So I, I cut all, a lot of the fluff out. So I personally don't include any music, typically. I, I rarely do. I have one one whole series with music because somebody said, oh, you have to have music. They're a musician. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll put music in during the intro. Done. Moving on. Um, and, you know, it's like, so what, do you, what are they getting out of it? So, so if the audience is getting something out of it and you're getting feedback, you'll rarely get feedback. You'll have maybe thousands of listeners and you'll get like one or two or three people saying something. Unless, you're ta- they're, unless it's something like super radically, like a touch point, like, you know, religion, politics, you know, the, the, the touch points that people are have, like, the, it's the big red button that's everyone's going to scream at you, which it'll build you an audience, but it'll build you haters and, and lovers, right? on the other side of that polarized situation. I avoid the polarization for the most part. If, if I have a, like I'll, I'll bring up a topic sometimes and I have a opposing view of how something can get done or should get done. Right. And they'll say their point. And I was like, well, I, I think it should get done this way. And maybe neither of us are right because there might be a third or fifth way to do it. Right. But you can bring up both ways and that feeds the audience, that content, that information. And, let the audience decide, right? So the more value you provide the audience, the more likely they're going to continue coming, number one, right? Because you want people to keep coming to you and keep listening. And even though I ask the exact same questions all the time, every single time I get different answers, every single time. So you'll see some podcasters have some scripted boilerplate, boilerplate questions and then other ones will be off the cuff like, you know, Oprah style or Tim Ferriss style or whatever. And they're great because, you know, if you're talking to one person versus another, there's different history, right? And if you want to learn their entire bio, which some people do, like, you know, like uh, a really, 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 really good episode that I listened to that from Tim Ferriss, which was really long but extremely good, was uh, Jamie Foxx. So if you know about Jamie Foxx or want to know about Jamie Foxx, listen to the Tim Ferriss one. Or if you want to know about Seth Godin, like, I'm a Seth Godin fan. I went to Alt-NBA. Uh, Raz did, too. Uh, anyone else went to Alt-NBA or know who Seth Godin is? No? It's okay. He's a number one marketer. And he has a podcast. Just Google Seth, and you'll learn all about Seth Godin. Just search Seth. He's the only Seth you need to know about. <laughs> Moving on. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Other questions? No? Are we good? Are we a little over? Yeah, we're a little bit over. I'm just okay. going to, no, if there's anything no. else, just a little, a little Please. Out. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, again, this is Tyler. If uh, I want to first thank all of y'all for coming out to the pod box. And, Henrik, big big thank you, big shout-out to you for uh, preparing this presentation on a weeknight, you know, and coming down. Where are you? You're up in South Carolina? I'm in Bluffton, yeah. South yeah, he's Carolina. in Bluffton. Yeah. So he mm-hmm. comes down to Savannah just to 
you know, educate us and meet. And it's really awesome. And we really appreciate your You're time. Um, so if you want to learn more, you can find us on meetup at the Savannah podcast meetup on meetup.com. You can find us on Facebook at the Savannah podcast network, or you can go to S A V P O D B O X Sav podbox.com. Learn about the space. We're now starting to host other podcasters and uh, we've got all the equipment, the microphones, and uh, everything you need to start your own podcast if you're interested. So uh, that's it for, for us. Uh, and uh, thank you all for tuning in. Thanks for, for watching us, and thanks for coming out. And uh, we're super happy to have you here, and we'll see you again soon.